Hello everybody, the topic of today's video is masking. Masking lets you hide parts of your animation or drawing and it's an important part of every animator's toolkit. So I recommend watching the entire video because we look at how masks work, some common problems you might have when working with masks, and then we'll also look at how to animate using mask. But if you're in a hurry, I've left timestamps in the description so you can skip around. And with that said, let's first look at how to create a mask. So here in this Adobe Animate document, I've already created a fish and a background. And you can see that they're both on their own layers. They're also both inside symbols. Let's figure out how to mask this fish. The first thing we want to do is to create a new layer above the fish. And this is because the mask layer affects the layer that is directly beneath it. Let's name this mask. And note that this new layer is not a mask layer yet. It's still just a normal layer. We'll turn this into a mask layer in the next step. But for now, let's draw a shape on the new layer that covers part of the fish. When drawing a mask, I always make sure that object drawing mode, which you can see over here in the properties panel, is turned off because masks can behave weirdly when objects or groups are involved. If you happen to be working with an object or group, you can break it apart by going up to modify and selecting ungroup. Moving on, let's fill in the shape using the paint bucket. And it really doesn't matter what color you use or what the opacity is, Adobe Animate only cares about which part is filled in. Finally, to turn this into a mask layer, right click on the layer name and select mask. As you can see, only the parts of the fish that were covered by the shape are now visible. The rest of the fish has been hidden or masked. If you look down at the layers, the fish layer is now indented beneath the mask layer and the icons have changed. Adobe Animate has also locked both layers. Keep in mind that masking only works when the layers are locked. So if I unlock either layer, the mask is now disabled. And while the mask layer is unlocked, you can also make changes to the mask using any of the drawing or transform tools, like so. Moving on, a single mask layer can be used to mask multiple layers. If I wanted to add the background to the mask, I can simply drag the background layer so that it's indented beneath the mask layer. And because it's already locked, both the fish and background are now masked beneath that weird shape we drew. To remove layers from the mask, drag the layer down and to the left so that it's no longer indented. It can be a bit fiddly sometimes, just watch that little white dot. And that covers the basics of masking. Now let's dive a little deeper. Masks can be created using filled shapes, text, or symbols, and each option is good in its own way. The mask that we created earlier in the video was a filled shape, which we drew with the classic brush tool and filled in with the paint bucket. Filled shapes can also be created using the shape tools, like the rectangle or oval tool. And don't forget that you need to lock the layer for the mask to work. Field shapes are easy to create and are a good choice if you just need a simple mask or if you want to animate your mask frame by frame. For example, I'll quickly animate these two shapes combining into one bigger shape. If you're new to frame by frame animation, check out my video on the basics of animating in Adobe Animate. I'll leave a link in the description and top right. And now with the animation done, you can see that the mask will still work when I lock the mask layer and press play. Besides filled shapes, we can also use text objects for our mask. Let's clear the keyframes on the mask layer. And we'll use the text tool here in the toolbar to write, let's write underwater. If I lock the layer now, you can see that the fish and background are now masked behind the text. It's important to point out that text objects are treated like groups. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, masks can behave weirdly when it comes to groups. For example, if I add another text object to this mask layer and then lock the layer, the mask seems to be just ignoring the new text object I created. It's still there on the mask layer, but 
it just isn't being used to mask the fish or background. One way to get around this is to break both text objects by using the shortcut Command B if you're on a Mac or Control B if you're on Windows. The first time you do this, the text object is broken into individual letters in their groups. So you need to break it a second time, hitting Command B again to turn them all into filled shapes. Locking the mask layer now, you can see that the mask is working for both words. Lastly, masks can be created using symbols, like graphic symbols or movie clips. Let's turn these shapes into a symbol by selecting them, right clicking, and selecting convert to symbol. I like using graphic symbols, so I'm going to select graphic as the symbol type, and we'll call this mask symbol. If you're not familiar with symbols, I recommend watching my introduction to symbols, which is linked in the description below and top right on screen. I'll lock the mask layer so you can see that it works, but keep in mind that graphic symbols are also treated like groups. So make sure that the graphic symbol is the only object on the mask layer. On top of that, the mask only looks at the bottom most layer inside the symbol. Double clicking to go inside the symbol, you can see that there's only one layer in the symbol right now, but let's create a new layer and drag it to the bottom. We'll use the circle tool to draw a circle on this layer. Pay attention to the fact that these two layers in the symbol are exactly the same. They're normal layers, and the only difference between them is that the layer with the text on it is above the layer with the circle. Keeping that in mind, if I go back to the main scene now, and lock the mask layer, we can see that the mask is only in the shape of a circle and it's ignoring the letters that were not on the bottom mouse layer. And you might be wondering, why bother with symbols and all these weird limitations and rules when you can just draw your mask directly on the layer as a filled shape? One big reason is that symbols can be tweened, which means you can easily animate your mask. If you don't know what a tween is, I've covered motion tweens and classic tweens in my earlier videos. I'll leave links in the description and top right. And coming back to the tutorial, let's unlock the mask layer and add a tween by right clicking and selecting create motion tween. I'm using a motion tween here, but a classic tween will also work just fine. With the motion tween created, let's go to the last frame and drag the circle across the screen to create a new keyframe. And I might go inside the symbol and get rid of this text layer so it's not so distracting. And if we look down at the timeline, you can see that we've just created a new motion keyframe. If I lock the layer and press play, we now have an animated mask. And don't forget that you can also have frame by frame animation inside your symbol, as long as it's on the bottom layer, which can be handy for short looping animation like this one, where I just make the circle a little bit bigger. So it goes big and small like a, like a beating heart. When I lock the layer and press play, you can see that the looping animation works. And if you combine all of these stuff together, you can create some cool effects. Before I end the video, I want to point out that the layers being masked, in this case, the fish and the background can also be animated. For example, we can add a motion tween to the fish and line it up with the endpoint of the mask. And now it should look like we're watching the fish through a periscope. And that's it. We've now covered the fundamentals of masking in Adobe Animate. And as you saw in the last example I did, you can get some pretty interesting results when you combine the different techniques and skills that you've learned like masking and tweens and symbols and even some frame by frame animation. So just go out and experiment. Have fun masking. Have a nice weekend. See you next time. Goodbye.